Welcome to the Your Life Rocks podcast, where we believe life balance is possible. Yes, even for you. This show is designed to help working moms focus on the things that matter most in life and helping you balance all that life has for you with practical tips from one working mom to another. My name is Jenny Stemmerman, and I am so glad that you're here to hang out with me today. Now, today's episode is going live on Christmas Day, and I don't expect a lot of people to be listening to the show this week, but if you are, I wanted to bring back an episode that is really an oldie but a goodie. This is episode 50 of the show, which means it was a couple years ago. But the reason why I wanted to replay this episode for you this week was to get you ready for next week. Next week will be our first episode of 2019, where I'm going to walk you through a completely different way of setting goals and intentions for the new year. And this episode is really just going to get you ready for all of that greatness that we have coming for you next week. Now, I hope that you stick around to the very end of this episode because I have put together a new resource library just for you, the listeners of the show, where you can get podcast extras, some free courses, and a lot of other resources. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you the instructions on where you can find it, where you can access it. So make sure you stick around so you do not miss that. But for right now, let's get right into this week's episode. Hey there, thanks so much for being here and hanging out with us today. If this is your first time listening to the Your Life Rocks podcast, I want to welcome you to the show. This podcast is all about helping working Christian moms create balance, clear chaos, and build a life that rocks. I'm your host, Jenny Stemmerman, and I really am passionate about empowering you to move closer to your goals in all areas of life. Now, if you're a returning listener to this podcast, I want to thank you for coming back. I want to thank you for being so loyal. And as you know, these podcasts are usually full of actionable items, and this episode is no different. In fact, I think there's more action in this episode than any other episode we have ever done. Now, today we're going to be talking all about being the best version of you possible. After all, the Bible has said over and over and over how he wants us to bring the best of us, to always give our best in everything that we're doing. So that's what we're going to be diving into for this episode. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the content, there's just three things that I want to cover with you really more mindset things than actionable things. And I will come back to them multiple times, I'm sure, while we have this conversation together. But I think it's important that we start the episode with a good foundation. All right, so number one thing I want to talk to you about is this whole thing about justification. Now, sometimes we can make excuses and sometimes we can make justifications and they are a little bit different. And so I just want you to be very, very cautious of those things that come up for you as we're talking about the things we're going to talk about in this episode. So if you hear yourself internally saying, yeah, but on anything that we're talking about, I want you to just ask yourself, is that a reality? Is it a true obstacle standing in my way, i.e. an excuse? Or is it something that I'm just kind of making up, which would be a justification? Now, sometimes when we use the word excuse, it can kind of sound negative, right? Like it's something that we're putting in front of us. And sometimes that's the case, but sometimes it's just the reality of life and what we're facing. So I want you to just be open for that. And on the heels of that comes honesty, which is the second mindset thing I want to talk to you about and really for you to keep in mind is be really honest with yourself as we're moving through this exercise, as we're talking about really being that best version of ourself identifying if there's a justification or an excuse in front of you, be really honest with yourself, honest with what's really there and be open for possibility of something different. And lastly, before we get into the nitty gritty, as we're talking about mindset stuff is perfection. You know, sometimes when we think about being the best version of ourselves, we automatically think about being perfect, being that ideal state of what we would want to be. But sometimes that's just not who we are. So as we're going through this exercise today, I just challenge you, if you struggle with perfection, if that is something you're always striving for and it gets in your way, just take a deep breath in and let it go. 
Because perfectionism has no room in your life. That is what's causing the stress is that tension, right, between your expectation of perfection, which is unattainable, and the reality, which is sometimes and most often a crazy mess. The difference is, is when you're doing the best you can in the crazy mess, regardless of how that compares to the image in your head or the person next to you, you are blessed. You are winning. You are doing what is necessary. And to hold yourself to a standard to anything less than that or more than that is not okay. Being the best version of who you are is exactly that for each and every moment. All right, so now that we've covered off on some mindset things, now let's get into some real action items. So we're going to go through all eight categories of life and really share some tips on how you can be that best version of yourself. Are you ready? All right, let's get to it. So let's first talk about faith. Now, here's the thing. As we get into all of these, it's going to be pretty much the same, except for you know, some minor tips and things that as we dive a little bit deeper. But for all of these, I just want you to ask yourself this one question. When we talk about whatever the topic is, the question you need to ask yourself is, am I truly showing up as the best version of myself? And if not, what could I be doing differently? Notice I didn't say what you could be adding to, what more could you do? Because your plate is full enough. You are busy enough. But sometimes we just need to approach something different. And faith is a great example of that. You know, as we talk about being the best version of yourself and how you're showing up in your faith, it might be that you need to start getting into the word, that you need to start having routine prayer with God and making him the priority of your life. And if that's for you, that is your action step. Now, if you are already having time in prayer and this one Honestly, a few weeks ago, it really convicted me. The Spirit really convicted me on this topic because I was getting up every single morning and I was doing my morning routine where I would spend time in prayer. I would read the Bible. I would journal. But it started to become more of a checklist for me than an experience in a relationship with God. And although I'm doing the activity, it's not the best version of me because I'm not fully giving my spirit to God. I'm not truly spending time with him. At the end of the day, none of that other stuff matters. It's not about the checklist. It's about meeting him spirit to spirit. It's about wanting to follow him in my life. So if you find yourself kind of getting into that routine where it's not spirit led, that's not the best version of yourself. So ask yourself that question and see what you can do differently. Again, it's not about adding to, it's just doing differently so that you can really be the best version of yourself. All right, let's talk about marriage. Now, if you've heard me talk about marriage before, I can get kind of ranty, if that's a word, about my stance on marriage because I truly believe that personal accountability is such a big part of marriage. And I believe that because I have not always had the strongest marriage, but personal accountability on both of our sides at different points in time is what has saved our marriage. We've been married for almost 16 years now. And life is not always easy. Marriage is not always perfect. It's not always beautiful and honeymoon-like. Struggles happen. They come up in seasons. Sometimes they come up in just little moments. But whatever it is, ask yourself that same question. Am I being the best version of myself? Or are you being petty? Are there things that you need to forgive him for? Are there things you're waiting for him to take that first move? That's what I mean about personal accountability. The ball is always in your court. So if there's something there that you are knowing you need to show up differently, maybe showing up without an attitude, without a grudge, if that's the best version of yourself right now, then that's what I challenge you to do. If everything is beautiful in your marriage right now, being that best version of yourself, just enjoying that moment sometimes is it, right? Really experiencing that love experiencing that love, being present with him and enjoying the season of your life that is without strife because we all know it's going to come back around. It's just the nature of having a close, intimate relationship with someone and sharing life with them. All right, now let's move on to parenting. Are you being the best version of yourself as a parent? Now, there's all kinds of bunny roads we could go down on this topic, but the one I really want to hit on is being present. 
because there are going to be seasons in your career where you can't always be there for your kids. There's going to be seasons where you're extremely busy. There's going to be seasons where you are always there for them. But regardless of where you are physically, where are you mentally? Are you making the most of your time with your kids? Or are you getting stressed out because they're being so loud in the evening? Really ask yourself, are you being the best version of yourself as a parent? Maybe for you, it's that you need to really lay down the law and have some discipline with your kids. Maybe you've letting them run amok. Maybe you have them so disciplined that you forget that they're kids and they're supposed to be having fun. Whatever it is for you, just ask yourself that question of what you could do differently if you're not currently being the best version of yourself. All right, now let's talk about your health. Now this one runs deep because it's one of those things that the results are just as important as the actions. And this one it really hits home for me where I am right now. You know, in our membership, we talk about um, our standard operating practices and having great habits. And I like to say I have good health habits, but they're not getting me great results because there's other unhealthy habits that I have that counteract my healthy habits. So being the best version of myself in my health is not where I'm at right now, but that's where I'm committed to going. And so although the results aren't there yet, my actions are. And every day is a struggle. Every day is a challenge to make sure that I'm putting the right nutrition in my body, that I'm moving enough, that I'm drinking enough water, that I'm getting enough sleep and I'm taking my vitamins. Because you know what? Being healthy isn't just about the scale. It's about all the other stuff too, right? So just like in every other area, I challenge you to ask yourself that question. Are you being the best version of yourself? And if not, what are you going to do about it? Because you have to take action. And again, Watch the justification, especially this time of year. This episode's going to come out in the first part of November. It's easy to justify it and say, you know what, I'll just wait until after the holidays. I'll get started on taking better care of my health in January. But why would you repeat that habit? Why would you do that to yourself? Why wouldn't you start to take care of yourself now? Again, it's not about the scale. It's about how you feel in your body. And it's truly about the longevity of this body Because it is the only body that you have been given for this life. And we only live once. It's not about looking great in a bikini. Maybe it is for you. But are you truly being that best version of yourself for your health? Are you being an example to your kids for your health? Or are you using your weight as a justification or having an unhealthy body as a justification from you achieving other goals in your life? Our health impacts everything. So what are you going to do about it? How are you going to become the best version of yourself for your health? All right, next up, let's talk about your career, being the best version of yourself for your career. Now, opposite of health, where health really is results-based and being the best version of yourself for your career, just think about it being how you show up, how you're being present. It doesn't have to do with your title. It doesn't have to do with if you're achieving your goals within your career. It has to do with how you show up. What's your attitude like? Are you coming into work moaning and groaning and dragging your feet because you do not want to be there? Or are you being the light of God in the workplace? Are you working with the Spirit of God knowing that everything that you do glorifies Him? And it's easy to have that justification, right? Of, oh, I'm tired or my have a horrible boss or whatever it might be, but we're called for something different. And so as you ask yourself that magic question, how are you being the best version of yourself or what would that look like for your career? Be thinking about what you could be doing differently and start doing it today. Because here's the thing, when we talk about doing differently, it can be hard, especially these things that are a habit and things that are a trigger. And sometimes for us, things in our career especially can be triggers where we don't even realize that we're acting or reacting in a certain way. So I challenge you just to be a little bit more conscious. Really think about how it is that you're showing up, what that internal dialogue in your head is all about. All right, let's talk about your finances, being the best version of you in your finances. Now, I love talking about finances because it can be a little bit more black and white than some of the other categories, right? When you think about the principles that you want to have in your life as it pertains to your finances. Maybe it's tithing, maybe it's savings, maybe it's sticking to a budget, all of those things. It's very black and white. You're either doing it or you're not. 
So again, give yourself some grace. This is not about perfection. It's about doing the best with what you have. There are months you might not have time to do a full budget and to reflect on it and see where you were and type everything into a computer and all of that kind of stuff. But maybe the best version of yourself in that season is spending less, really making sure that you are making your meals at home instead of eating out, that you are avoiding going to the mall, whatever it is in that season. But think about doing the best with what you have. You might be in a season where it's not possible for you to save. But again, watch those justifications because sometimes we say, oh, as soon as I make more money, then I will tithe to God. But we all know that's not biblical, right? He's called us to give the firsts to him. So if that's something you struggle with, I just invite you to pray and have God's spirit guide you in what is best for you in that situation. I just ask for you to pray for yourself. Let us pray for you and how God would like to guide you. All right, next up, let's talk about your home. So when we talk about having balance in your home, we're really talking about having a well-organized home. And we're talking about having a warm, comfortable, well-decorated home. It doesn't mean you have to change out your decorations every two or three months or make sure everything is always perfectly clean or nice, but you are creating a home. You know, I did a live video the other day and someone had commented about me being a homemaker. I never thought of myself as a homemaker. I'm a working mom. But then I thought, it is my responsibility to make our house a home. So I guess I am a homemaker. I guess we are all homemakers. So are you being the best version of yourself? Or are you being maybe a little bit of a slob? Are you letting things skate by that you know maybe you shouldn't? Maybe it has to do with chores for your kids. Maybe it has to do with just that pile of papers that are sitting on the counter that you keep saying you're going to get to that you haven't gotten to yet. Now, the reason why this is even on here, because some of you might be saying this is so not even a priority when you talk about faith and marriage and family and career and all these other things. Having a clean and organized home is so far down on the list. But it's something that has a huge ripple effect. When you are in an environment that feels good to you, that functions well, you are able to do so much more. When you have a well-organized food system in your house, you're much more likely to stick to healthy eating plans. You can be a much better parent when you're not distracted by all of the piles of junk around the house. When you've trained your kids, this is where the things go, and they're able to do that. And as we talk about our last topic of friends and fun, having a place that's warm and comforting and inviting really is important. So ask yourself that reoccurring question, Are you being the best version of yourself in your home? Is your home reflecting the best version of you? And if not, what are you going to do about it? And then that brings us to our last and final category, which is friends and fun. And I'll just say this about this topic because everybody is different. Some of us like to have a lot of friends. If you're an extrovert, you like to be surrounded by people. If you're an introvert, maybe you don't. Maybe you just want one or two special close friends. But as women, we have been called to community. So it's important that you find women that you can confide in, that you find women who can speak truth into your life and help guide you as you make decisions, that can help pray for you and support you, lift you up and remind you how awesome you are, how amazing of a woman you are. And so when we talk about being that best version of yourself, oftentimes when we think about friends, we think about what they're doing for us. Everything that I just talked about, right? Having those friends that lift you up, that pray for you, that speak truth to you. So I challenge you, are you doing that for your friends? Are you supporting them? Are you challenging them? Are you speaking truth into their life? Are you praying for them on a daily basis? Are you checking in with them to see how they're doing? A lot like marriage, it's personal accountability, right? Sometimes we can be sitting there for a long time, (laughs) a long time waiting for someone else to send that Facebook message, to send us a text, to invite us out for girls night. But you always, always can take that first step. Fostering relationships is an important thing. So again, ask yourself that question. Are you showing up as the best version of yourself as a friend? Or is there something that you might be able to change in order to show up better. All right, so we just covered all eight categories of life and really showing up to be that very best version of who you are in all eight categories. 
Now, hopefully you're leaving this podcast pumped up and ready to take action, ready to roll up your sleeves, straighten the lipstick, and be that best version of yourself. Maybe from this podcast and listening to all that information, maybe you're a little overwhelmed. Maybe you're leaving it like, oh my goodness, that is a lot to take on. I am not showing up where I need to be. Pick one or two areas and really focus in on those. And when they get strong, pick a couple more. Now, like I said, this will be an ongoing conversation all week. So I invite you to come over to our Facebook group. Just search Your Life Rocks in Facebook, or you can go to our show notes page at yourliferocks.com forward slash 50. That's just the number five zero. And we will have a link in there to the Facebook group so that you can continue in on this conversation with us all week long. Now, before we end this podcast, let me just talk to you real quickly about why it's important. And maybe I should have started the podcast with this, but I'm going to end it with this. Why is it important to be the best version of yourself? One, because that's what God has called us to do, to give our best, to be our best in everything that we do, glorify God. And he deserves our best, right? But also remember people are watching you, not just your kids, but everybody that comes in contact with you is watching you. You are an example. You are the light to all of them. And how you show up in life authentically, not superficially, but authentically gives people permission on how they show up. So if you show up fake and not real, then that's the bar you're setting for other people. If you're showing up not as your best and being loud and proud about it, then you're communicating to other people that it's okay that they don't show up as their best. Now, if your best is not as great as someone next to you, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You're giving people permission to be their best by being your best. Whenever you are less than your best, you're giving people permission to be less than their best. You know that saying, you're like the five people you spend the most time with? I want to challenge you to be the best person that people are around. Help them be better by association of you being better. Now it comes time for one of my favorite times of the podcast. If this is your first time listening, every single episode we have a verse that we focus in on. Because the Bible isn't dead words. They're living words of God. And it's really our instructions for our life. And so because we're talking about being our best, if you really want to know if that's a biblical practice or not, Google it. (laughs) You will find so many Bible verses that talk about this subject. And so we want to be obedient to God. We want to be obedient to his word. And if his word is telling us over and over to be the best version of ourselves then that is what we must do. So let's just focus in on one Bible verse. It's so hard because there's so many good ones. So this week we're going to look at Ecclesiastes 9.10, and this is the NIV version. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead where you are going, there is neither working nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom. Now, this Bible verse really points to the fact that we have just one life and to live it to the fullest. Doing less than our best is not living to the fullest. It's not using the full talent that God has given you. That's not being the light to the world, being a reflection of everything that Jesus is. Now, again, it's not about perfection. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare yourself to the woman next to you at the gym or what someone else, their best version of what that looks like for them in the moment. We all have hard days. We all have awesome days. And in our hard days, our best might not look the same as in our good days. And that's okay. It's the heart of it that really matters. So again, in all you do, ask yourself the question, am I being the best version of myself right now? And if the answer is no, figure out what you can do differently not to add on, just differently, to be the best version of you. Well, there you go. I hope that the exercises in this episode were helpful to you in getting primed and ready for the new year. And if at any time when you were listening to that, you were thinking, I'm not playing at the full version of myself. I'm not being that best version of myself in that area. Again, that question is, how can I do something different? And as you're thinking about those things that you can do differently, watch for those justifications or excuses that we give ourselves. Be honest with yourself 
and avoid perfection in all eight of those areas of life. Now, at the beginning of the episode, I told you about a new place that I have created for you where you can get all kinds of free resources to help you create more balance in your life. And I'm calling it the Balance Toolbox. Now, there are four different ways that you can access these resources. Number one is I will send you an email. If you are already on my email list, then you will get the link where you can log in. And when you're logging into this new site, you can log in your username and your password will be your email address. Now, if you're not already getting emails from me, you can sign up to get access to this toolbox by going to yourliferocks.com and click on the banner at the top. The number three way is I will be linking to it in our Facebook community. So if you're not yet a part of our Facebook community, search Your Life Rocks over on Facebook and you will find the group. It'll also be pinned at the top of our Facebook page. So either way, you will be able to find the link that you can access all of these resources. And the final way is over on Instagram. If you click on my bio on Instagram, you can find me at your.life.rocks. You'll see the link that says to sign up for your balance toolbox and you'll be able to access all of those resources. Now there are free courses in there, there are some checklists, there are some links to the free challenges that we do in association with this podcast and I'm gonna be keep adding things to it. So if you want to be able to have everything in one place, keeping it nice and simple, that is the place to go. Now I also wanna remind you that our prices are increasing for Life Balance membership inside the Your Life Rocks app as of January 1st. So if you wanna lock in the founder rates, then now is the time to upgrade inside your app. And if you don't yet have the app, then you should definitely go and download that right away. Now I know I just gave you a lot of things to do at the end of the show, but pick one and go for it. Or if you're an overachiever, you can go for more, right? The three things you're gonna wanna do after listening to the show is one, get your access to the free balance toolbox. Number two, download the app if you haven't already. And if you are looking to really make 2019 completely different for yourself, if you're looking to redefine balance in a whole new way, set healthy habits, and really learn how to apply a lot of the things that we're talking about on this show, then you're gonna wanna upgrade to Life Balance Membership and lock in your rate of just $9.99 a month. And if you're listening to this and it's after January 1st, the membership is still very affordable at just $14.99. And you can learn more about everything that we're talking about on this show by going to yourliferocks.com. Now again, next week is going to be a very exciting episode, so I hope that you tune in. If you haven't yet hit subscribe, I hope that you do because we are going to be talking about how to go into 2019 in a really strong way and making it truly a different year for you. A year where you're making room for God to be able to guide you and to go before you and follow him with intention and purpose. So until then, keep building a life that rocks. Bye.